Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. This will be the last bonus weather video for the year 2022. And we're going to talk about surface weather observations and it is all about the code. Uh, you remember uh, Weird Al Yankovic when he had that song about it's all about the Pentiums? Well, this is all about the code. And uh, when I was in school uh, back in the mid and late 70s, we had what was called a surface airways code, uh, which we had to learn. And uh, we had to learn all the three-letter airport identifiers uh, east of the Mississippi River uh, so we could plot uh, the maps uh, by hand. And it usually took about 45 minutes to an hour to plot the map before you could ever analyze it and make any sense out of it. Uh, but I'll tell you, you knew that information by the time you got done plotting all that data. And you also knew the geography uh, very, very well. Uh, so it was a neat geography lesson in addition to a meteorological lesson. So let's go on ahead here and take a look at an example of an observation from the RDU airport earlier today. So KRDU is the station. Now the K uh, tells you that it is, it is a uh, United States station. The Canadian stations start with C. Uh, all the other countries start with different letters, which tells you what country the observation is from. But for the United States, it's K. And uh, so that's the station, and then the date is the 30th, the time, uh, and, and we're going to go into more detail on all of this in just a second. I'm just highlighting the areas and tell you, uh, telling you what type of data it gives us. That's the time of the observation. This is the uh, wind direction and wind speed, the visibility, uh, the height of a cloud layer, the height of another cloud layer, the rounded off temperature in Celsius and the rounded off temperature or dew point in Celsius, the altimeter setting, uh, what type of observation station it is, the sea level pressure, the temperature more specific now uh, down to the tenth of a degree Celsius and the dew point down to the tenth of a degree Celsius, highest temperature observed in Celsius in the last six hours, lowest temperature observed in the last six hours, and the pressure tendency, is the pressure higher or lower than it was six hours ago, or three hours ago, I'm sorry. It's a six-hour temperature max and min and a three-hour pressure tendency. So I'm going to take myself out of the picture here so that you can see all of this information. So the translation here, the station is RDU. The date is December 30th. The time is 1751 Zulu. And that's Greenwich Mean Time. Now, this time of year, we're five hours behind that. During daylight saving time, we're four hours behind it. But for now, we're five. And so 1751 minus five is 1251. So this observation was taken at 1251 p.m. earlier today. The wind is coming from 160 degrees at a speed of four knots. Now, if you're familiar with the cardinal wind directions, uh, 360 is north, 90 is east, 180 is south, 270 is west. So this wind is just east of being due south. You might call it a south-southeasterly breeze. The visibility is 10 statute miles. There are a few clouds at 4,200 feet and also a few more at 25,000 feet. If there were more clouds than just a few, if it was scattered, I believe, if I'm rem remembering correctly, that's like a tenth of the sky covered to uh, a half the sky covered. If it's broken, it's uh, half the sky to 90% covered, and if it's overcast, it's more than 90%. So we would see like SCT, BKN, OVC if there were more clouds, but today there weren't, and so it just said there were a few at those two different levels. Uh, the rounded temperature in Celsius is 20 or 68 Fahrenheit. The rounded dew point is 9 or 48 Fahrenheit. The altimeter is 30.26 inches of mercury, which is sort of like what your home barometer would show. The station is automated and has a precipitation sensor. That's what the AO2 means after the RMK, which is a remark. If it was A01, it would be an automated station without a precipitation sensor. The sea level pressure is 1,024.6 millibars. Now, look up here where that data actually is. Okay, If this three, these three digits, the 246, are below 500, you put a 10 in front of it and put a decimal point before the last digit. So that makes it 1,024.6. If this number was above 500, let's say it was 946, then we would put a 9 in front of it and it would be 994.6. Okay, so that's the way you decode that. 
Now, uh, where was I here? Uh, the Oh, okay. So the exact temperature down to the tenth of a degree Celsius is 20.0, and the exact dew point down to the tenth of a degree Celsius is 9.4. The highest temperature in the last six hours was 20 degrees C. The lowest temperature in the last six hours was 2.8 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is 3.4 millibars lower than it was three hours ago, and the way it did that was it first fell and then rose a little bit. Now, there are uh, eight different uh, pressure tendency patterns. You can, uh, zero through three is uh, higher than it was three hours ago, five through eight it's lower, and four it's the same, and then the other numbers, like the zero, one, two, and three, it either can be rising and then falling, it can be rising and then steady, or it can just be steadily rising. Uh, it could be falling and then rising, falling and, falling and then steady, and then just steadily falling. So there are eight different possibilities here, and the five happens to uh, fall into the category of first falling and then rising, but being lower than it was three hours ago. All right, you got all that? <laughs> and then you plot that, or computers actually do it for us now, in the form of what we call a station model plot. And uh, the only thing that uh, I didn't talk about in detail in that uh, explanation there is the wind, uh, is that this is the station here, and so the, you draw a line toward the direction the wind is coming from. So in the case of the RDU observation, it was coming from 160 degrees. So if I were doing that, I would draw a line like this, just to the east of due south. Now, each one of these long lines represents 10 knots. So 10 plus 10 is 20. Now, if I had two long ones and then a short one, that would be 10 plus 10 plus 5 or 25. And I think you'll see that in an example here. This is an actual plot uh, from actually just a little bit earlier than the time of this recording. And another thing you can pick out here very clearly is where the next cold front is. You notice how all these winds here, uh, this wind is from the south, this is from the south-southeast, south-southeast, and then it shifts to the northwest at Owensboro, Kentucky, and it's in the out of the north-northeast here, out of the north here, and so right between those areas, if I were to draw the front in here, I would draw it right along like this, where the wind shifts, okay? So here you have a wind speed of 5 knots, 5 knots, this one has a long and a short, so that's 15, that's 5, that's 5. Most of them are 5 knots, but there are a couple that are a little bit stronger. Here's another 15 here in southern Tennessee with one long and one short. Now, the thing is, and I'll put myself uh, back in here, or try to anyways, uh, when you were hand plotting these maps uh, back in the old days, it was absolutely imperative uh, that you knew exactly where these stations were, because otherwise you're fumbling around looking all over this map trying to find where that identifier is, and it takes forever to, to plot a map like that. But once you learn them, then when you saw RDU, you knew immediately to go to North Carolina. If you saw STL for St. Louis, you knew immediately to go to Missouri. If you saw ORD for O'Hare, you knew immediately to go to Illinois, and if you saw LGA for LaGuardia, you knew immediately to go to New York. Uh, so once you had all those codes in your mind, then you every time you saw it on the teletype uh, printout, which is what we had back then, then you would know exactly what place on the map to go to plot that data. And it made the plotting much, much, uh, much, much simpler and much, much quicker. And, uh, and then once you got it all plotted, then you draw on the isobars and the fronts and maybe shade in the areas that are raining and snowing. And it can really become quite an exercise in art, to be honest with you. Uh, I used to have a ball uh, plotting these maps and, and analyzing them and, and making them all colorful and all that sort of stuff. All right, so that's a little bit about uh, the data that we get from uh, observation stations and how it's coded and how we decode it and try to make sense of it and then how we get it on a weather map and, uh, and then uh, pl you know, have that data uh, all at the same time and then we can make sense of it in terms of where those weather systems are and how they're moving. All right, that's bonus weather video number two for this week and the last one for 2022. We'll have another one for you coming up next Tuesday, which will be January 3rd, if I'm correct. 
And uh, we hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful New Year's weekend. Please be safe. Uh, if you are going to, uh, you know, drink, make sure you do not drive. Uh, you know, I drive Uber and Lyft, and uh, I will be more than happy tomorrow night to take as many people as, are, as is necessary uh, to make sure that they get from where they are to where they want to go safely and that they don't put anybody else at risk out there. So make sure you uh, uh, behave sensibly, but you can still enjoy yourself and be around friends and family and have a good time, and we'll see you back here again on Monday. Happy New Year, everybody.